everyone. Welcome to VESC's uh, fourth webinar this um, in this EdBreak series. And I'm so excited. I'm, my name is Amy Lynn. I'm the director of VESC, and I'm so excited to be here with one of our doctoral students, Regina Humphrey. I think you are in for a treat. Regina is um, very fun to talk with and has lots of experience and creative ideas um, with online teaching and learning and, and with this topic in particular of using Google Docs. And Emily, why don't you get started? Absolutely. Uh, thank you all for being here today. As you can see, we are in a Zoom meeting format. So if you would like, you're welcome to turn your camera on throughout this meeting. Uh, we encourage dialogue, conversation, um, having those questions in the chat. And um, I guess I should back up a moment. I am Emily Springer. I'm an academic trainer in the Center for Teaching and Learning. And we're thrilled to be able to help VASC host their webinars. Um, I've certainly learned a lot along, along the way from this last series that VASC has offered. And we are absolutely looking forward to tonight's webinar with Regina Humphrey. I'm going to do a very uh, short housekeeping piece and then I'm going to introduce Regina for you. This webinar is being recorded and we are going to post it in our CTL webinar resource page. We also are going to post this on the VESC playlist, which is on our public YouTube channel. And if you do want to see a scrolling subtitle of this webinar, you're welcome to hover over the bottom of your Zoom and hit the CC option and hit show subtitle. Otherwise, um, as I mentioned before, we're in a meeting format, so please make sure you are muted unless you are um, called upon to ask a question or have conversation. That being said, Regina is a lifelong learner who's had the opportunity to travel the world with her parents during their time in the Air Force. She received her bachelor's in science in biology from Northwestern State University, her master's of arts in teaching from Louisiana College. And she's currently pursuing her educational doctorate from North Central University. Regina began her career in education 10 years ago as a science teacher. She has taught a range of content areas from middle school science to high school biology. Regina has had the opportunity to present to her school's district and even her state in various professional learning capacities, which include STEM, stem cell reprogramming, IHUB biology, curriculum rollouts, and data analysis and classroom management techniques. Her greatest joy is, being found, in, uh, is found in being a wife to Bryant Humphrey Sr. and a mother to her three children, children Alexia, Bryant, and Derek. So that is a little bit about the background of our presenter today. And without further ado, I am going to kick it right over to Regina Humphrey so she can dive into her presentation today. Hello, everyone. How are you? How are you? Thank you so much, Dr. Lynn. Thank you so much, Ms. Springer, so much for your help um, getting this started off. Again, if you are open to it, if you're welcome to turn your cameras on, you're welcome to use your uh, your reactions, raise your hand if you have a question, or just go ahead and type your dialogue into the chat as we go. So, hey, uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen and let's get into it. All right, so again, we have the benefits of uh, using the Google Suite as a collaborative tool. So what do I mean by that? I mean that, we can use any of the Google uh, suite. So Google Docs, Google uh, Sheets, Google Slides, any of the Google suite, Google Forms, um, they all talk to each other and they all have some of the same benefits and the same usage uh, that you can use as you move forward um, in your classrooms, in your, uh, in your sororities, in your um, any online, uh, collaboration, you can use all of the tools together. So um, let's get into the agenda. So tonight we're going to talk about, again, the benefits of collaboration. Why do we even work together? You know, I don't like people, so why are we doing this? So again, you know, so just why we do that. Google Suite collaboration tools. So again, I'm going to show you actual tools that you can use as you are uh, using all the Google Suite. Um, to, tools for accountability. So again, if I give people a Google Doc, how can I see that they're actually collaborating in it instead of just looking at a whole bunch of black text? 
and then let's collaborate. We're actually going to collaborate together if you have that functionality tonight. And so again, um, just take this ride with me. And if you have any questions, we're gonna address those as we move forward. So um, again, I am a nerd. I am a science nerd. And so I still follow Kessler Science Professional Learning Network on Facebook. And uh, Ms. Catherine Kelcher, she gave me permission to share this, uh, this feedback uh, that she gave to us all. So I'm not gonna read it all because you're very intelligent, but I want to share with you just a few things. It said, if I had one thing I, were, I wish I would taught my kids more, it would be how to collaborate, especially on shared docs. Whether it's Google or Microsoft, a document presentation or PowerPoint, they need to know how to functionally do it as well as how to be a good team member and practice to have one group member um, serve as the boss who sets the requirements and checks along the way. Um, she says that she, I am just a collect uh, executive assistant, but everyone from the CEO down to little old me in a multinational 100,000 plus employee business collaborates in this manner. And so if we take the time to, again, I'm speaking from a teacher, an assistant principal point of view, um, if we take the time to teach our kids these functionalities um, and what's available to them, um, we can definitely uh, get them to go and use these tools well beyond just our K-12 classrooms. And so that is definitely gonna be something that we go over tonight. All right, so we're gonna go into the benefit of collaboration. Why collaborate? When, why, where? Um, it, fa it fosters 21 sensory skills. So again, uh, le learning how to problem solve. Thinking and problem solving are definitely things that we're seeing in the classrooms that are missing from us. Uh, knowing how to be creative how to take a blank page and just make it something worthwhile. Show me what you know in a virtual setting and all the Google tools can be uh, used for that. Um, again, real-time problem solving. I see something right now that's not working. So I can definitely uh, fix that as I'm moving forward. Uh, it allows for conversations to occur even when we're not face-to-face. -face. So even if this webinar were not happening, I could share a Google Doc with you and we could have a whole conversation back and forth without having to sit in the same room together. And so uh, again, I see the benefits in that as well. It frees up time for discussion rather than research. So again, if I get into a meeting, I don't want to have to go and pull all the resources while we're in the meeting. I want to problem solve. I want to come up with a finished product by the time that we finish uh, our conversation instead of spending that time in a meeting trying to pull resources and figure out, you know, what are our ideas. We can come to the meeting with the ideas already done so that we can actually get some things done by the end of our meeting. So those are really cool things. All right. So uh, let's take a second. I see a lot of things happening in the chat. So. <laughs> Let's uh, take a second, Emily, and see what's in there. Absolutely. Um, some of the things that have popped up in there are just some of our attendees saying where they're joining us from, Texas, okay. Virginia, Ohio. The other piece is I just gave the audience members a, a tiny heads up that we will be accessing a Google Doc form later. So just to keep an eye open for that when the time's appropriate. Spectacular. And thank you all for joining from all over the nation. I really appreciate it. I am humbled that you would take your time out today on a Monday on a Monday <laughs> to spend some time with me talking about the Google Suite. So again, I really appreciate your time. All right, so let's dive into it. So we have some um, different things that you can do inside of your uh, Google Suite. Definitely you have the share option. You can comment. You can share links to other documents and things of that nature. You can make copies of something so you can preserve your original. And um, then other people can take it and make it whatever their own. And then, of course, I'm going to share some uh, Google Classroom tips as we move forward. So I'm going to move into my, my Google Doc at the moment. And I'm going to move into the share button. So as soon as my internet wants to act like it uh, got some home training, uh, <laughs> you're going to move into our share document. So. The share button over here on the side really lets you do a litany of things, okay? So if you click on that share button on the side, if you have Google Docs, if you're familiar with it, that share button is in every single document. So Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, 
Google Forms. It's always over there. And, it, and the functionality is pretty much the same. The reason you're seeing a lot of these things in here is because I've already created a Google Classroom for this, uh, this event. And so I've shared it with a few different people. And whenever, like if you join the Google Classroom, you'll automatically have access to it. But again, you can join, you can add anyone with just their email and you can literally type their email in and then you can click it on there and then you can figure out what do you want to do? What do you want them to let them do? Uh, what access do you want them to have? So again, now Keandra Ford would be able to either view it. So that means that she can just look at it. She can't um, change anything. She can't move anything around. All she can do is look at it, okay? The commenter will just be able to highlight and add comments, still not be able to move anything around, not be able to access any of the text boxes, not be able to add any text except for their comments to my document. Or as you all are, whenever you click the link, you'll be able to be an editor. So everyone in this uh, webinar will be able to add text at the same exact time <laughs> in a Google Doc, Google Sheets, Google Slides, all again, the functionality is all the same. And so why is that beneficial? If again, if I have a group, a meeting that we're going to have, I call them flip, Flip, flip meeting. Sometimes you've heard of a flip classroom. So the flip classroom would be where I tell the children to uh, watch this video so that when we get back together, we can actually have something to talk about. Whereas a flip meeting would be add your comments, give me your perspective in before we get to the meeting so that we can actually, you know, get some problem solving done when we're all meet together. And so again, that, that are some of the benefits of uh, having the editing uh, capabilities open to people. But again, if you want to preserve your original viewer or comment, those are the two that you want to use for that. All right, so I'm actually going to take her off of there because she has no idea. <laughs> All right, and so we're actually going to move now to a link, no, a comment, excuse me. So if I wanted to make a comment, as you can see, when I highlighted a text, some little things came up over here on the side, okay? So I have add a comment. That means that as long as that text stays right there, I can add a comment to the, the document and that stays with the entire document the entire time. So if I want to tell somebody to make this bold and it's just a comment, I can make that, add it right here, and it stays with the text. Now, if I take the text away, if I decide to erase it, that means the comment goes away as well, okay? So again, you have to kind of be careful with that. If you want the comment to stay, you have to be playful with the text as you move around. So again, um, that's the thing. And then also, you can um, use this uh, resolve button. You know, if they go in and they do it, you know, they've done what you asked them to do, you click resolve and it goes away. So that's, uh, again, that's very beneficial if you're giving feedback to students. So again, some, one of the things that I did as a science teacher, I, um, I did writing tasks in my class. And so again, what you mean, Ms. Humphrey, we gotta write in science, ha ha ha, sure do. So we're going to write and we're going, I'm going to go through the text and I'm going to highlight sections and I'm going to give them direct feedback and they can definitely um, use that feedback and resolve it when they've uh, taken care of what I've asked them to. And so that is one of the things that I've definitely used. And I've seen it as a benefit um, as I've uh, used it in my own classroom. And I've seen it as a benefit as I've hosted meetings and things as I've moved into administration as well. All right. So now we're going to do a link. And so what does that mean? That means that I can take this text right here and I can take another document and link it to this document so that so it's a hyperlink. So if I click on uh, the text, it'll take me to the document. What does that look like, Ms. Humphrey? I'm so glad you asked. So this right here, right here, um, it looks kind of like a, a paper clip, if you would. Up here at the top, right by the comments, is insert a link. And when you click on that, this little text box kind of uh, pops up. 
And so I have a whole bunch of things that I can do um, and I can uh, link in or, and that's in my Google Drive, or I can go in and I can highlight the uh, text at the top in my uh, address bar, go in and apply it there so that whenever I click this text from now on, it now sends me to a brand new document, okay? So what, how is that beneficial? If I have a writing task, but I need them to read something first or watch a video somewhere else, I can link that directly into the document so that they can kind of hover over each thing and kind of toggle between the, the, um, the bars at, at the different times. And so again, uh, I found that to be beneficial. I have taught my children very emphatically, very explicitly that you're gonna to have to get used to working with two or three screens at a time. And so I've seen that as a benefit again, as I move forward. So um, again, if you don't like that, if you don't really want to do that, you can't, or you have the wrong link or something happened in that, um, you can definitely uh, have that as a function. And then uh, you can also remove the link. If the link is wrong, you can go ahead right here where it says remove link. You can also edit the link or you can copy it, but you can also just take the link away and it's gone, okay? So those are a few things that you can do in the Google Classroom. Um, now we're gonna talk about a making a copy, all right? So again, over here under file, there's a whole bunch of things that'll take a whole bunch of time to talk about, but we're gonna focus on making a copy. When you make a copy, you're going to come up with this text box. And at the beginning of the text, it will say copy of, and then the name of the text, okay? So if you want to totally change the name of the text and then come up with a brand new document, you can do so here. But you have to be really careful um, because again, as I just said, in your Google Suite or your Google Drive, things get lost if the names are the same, okay? So you have to be really careful with that, okay? And then again, you can figure out where you want to put it in your drive. You can share it with different people. You can, uh, if there are comments already written onto the document, you can keep those comments and suggestions with the document as you make a copy. And again, that's another thing. As you make a copy, you click that, and then it comes up um, as another tab at the top of your screen. Okay, so cool. That was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. Is there any? Are there any questions that anybody has about what I just did? Um, is there anything that I need to kind of review? I kind of went too fast. You want me to go back over? Absolutely. And and just so folks know, you should have the option to raise your hand if you do have a question or there's a piece you want her to go back over again. Um, feel free to do that or pop that in the chat. All I'm, just, right. I'm just going to give like a second just in case. <laughs> Absolutely. No problem. But I don't think at this time there is. Okay. Absolutely fine. So I'm moving into my Google Classroom. I'm moving into my Google Classroom because I want to show you um, some of the things that you can do. There we go. Okay. Some of the things that you can do here. Um, Miss Juanita, I see you have your hand up. You have a question? She does. Yeah, I just saw that. Hey, Tony, can you talk? Should be able to unmute. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Everything just went so fast. Um, I, I didn't even see how you got to Google Docs. If you just show me that, okay, I'll wait for the recording. Not a problem at all. So, um, whenever Google comes up, there are I call them the nine magic boxes. <laughs> so over here in the top right corner, you'll see your avatar for your uh, account. And then right here next to it, you'll, you'll see Google Apps. And that's these little nine little dots right here. When you click on that behind uh, my pictures, um, you'll see all of the Google Suite right there. So you have Google Meet, Calendar, Slides, all of these things talk to each other, okay? And so where do I open Google Docs? Right here, it's the blue icon. Now, what do I use mostly? 
my drive, definitely, because everything I make, no matter what it is over here in this uh, area, um, it all goes to my drive. And just for you know privacy purposes, I'm not going to open that. But um, again, I use my <laughs> Gmail. I use uh, my classroom, no problem. Sheets and slides. That's something I use all the time. I'm always opening a, a, a Google Doc, say, hey, let's work on this together. And so that's where I access that. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Hey, raise your hand. I'll get to it. All right. So again, I'm back in my Google Classroom. This is what I created so that all of my um, documentation is in one place. Um, this is something I would use, again, if I were teaching a class, a course, all of my documents can be in one place, all of my directions can be right here, and then I will tell them first open this, then open this, and go in this order, all of my success criteria will be right there, and we'll get into what a success criteria is in just a few minutes. Um, hi, I did not start off with this, <laughs> but I, my, my lights are on uh, a, a movement you know, thing. Is my lighting okay? Everything? Okay. All right. Well, then I'm gonna leave it off. That's cool. All right. It's so okay. Anyway. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So what, what was I getting at? So again, if I want to share a document in a, a Google Classroom, there's a few things that I can do. Okay. If I go and I um, attach something from my Google Drive, it gives me a few options as to what I can allow students to do with that document, okay? So that one document is selected, I can add it. Now, when I add it, here's exactly what I'm trying to get at. There's a few things that you can do. You can, again, the same concept as sharing a document, like I showed you earlier, you can allow students to only view the file, you can allow students to edit the file, or you can allow students to make a copy and so that every student in the classroom will have their own copy and they can do what they want to with it, okay? So how is that beneficial? If I have this worksheet and I know that I want them to type their answers in, then all I have to do is allow it for it to make a copy, to make a copy, I'm sorry, my son just walked in, <laughs> to make a copy, and then um, I, can, I can see their work real time. I can actually open everybody's document one by one. And then I can also give them feedback real time. So, hey, baby, I see you're not working. What's, what's going on with number three? And I can either give that verbally or I can, again, type and add comments to their document since it now belongs to them, okay? So again, that is something that I've also found very helpful. All right. so. I'm gonna move forward well, into my Google uh, slide show. And so I wanted to kind of show you this again, the share button is right there, same functionality um, that you would have. All right, so um, again, I've already shown you a, different, a couple of different ways that you can make a copy of some Google files, but I'm gonna show you another one. So uh, if you go into a Google slide, uh, doc, anything. Um, when you go into the address bar, the address bar up here at the top, um, you'll see a whole bunch of gibberish. And then at the end of it, you'll see edit. If you see edit, then that means you have access to edit the document. But if you want people to make a copy, you'll click on, you'll uh, copy the address bar um, onto a document. You'll change the word edit to copy. And then when they click on that link, of course, because I own it, you see you will force people to make a copy of your document, okay? So again, that is another way that you can uh, make, force people to make a copy of your document and preserve your uh, original. And so that's pretty much why I wanted to show you um, that. Here are some of the pitfalls. Again, I'm speaking from an administrative view uh, of school setting, school building level. Once you teach kids how to do this, they're going to do this. So what do I mean by that? That means that they're going to open Google Docs. They're going to share it with a whole bunch of people, and they're going to have conversations during the school day. We learned this the hard way. So <laughs> definitely um, hold your students accountable. 
um, if they are uh, having uh, taken this into their own hands and things of that nature. Um, again, we have access to access every student's account. And so we've been able to catch things before they got way too large and, you know, let them know that, haha, I can see you. So be very careful. Um, and then again, if the files are not shared correctly, this literally happened right before the webinar. Um, if I send out the document and then somebody calls me back and say, uh, it says I don't have edit access, my fault. That means you just need to go back into the document. You'll go back into the document and you need to check your restrictions. What do I mean by that? That means that in the share button, you need to check to see if who you shared it with has um, edit access or are they just a viewer? So over here, I can change the fact whether I'm a viewer, a commenter, or editor. I can change that access right there in the share button. So again, after I type in whoever I want to access it, I can change their uh, in information over there on the side. And again, that is definitely uh, a lifesaver. <laughs> and it happens real time. After you change it, you ask the person to refresh the screen and whatever um, happens instantaneously, which is why I really love the Google School. Okay, um, so we're going to move forward and uh, we're gonna talk about some tools of accountability really quickly. It's going to be in my um, Google Slides. All right, so success criteria. Um, that is actually a tap uh, uh, rubric uh, jargon, if you would. And so uh, we do um, we do walkthroughs and we do uh, teacher uh, observations. And so one of the things that we ask to, uh, teachers to do is to provide success criteria. What are the explicit instructions that will make sure that you get the desired product um, by the end of the time that the kids in, interact with what they're doing? So again, clear and explicit instructions for each and every activity so that you can hold everybody accountable for the finished product. The directions for collaboration and participation and what the finished product should look like. All of that should be outlined and I'll, I'll show you my success criteria for our activity in just a few minutes. Again, in that success criteria, I would definitely inclu include norms. So if you want them to change the font to something they like, absolutely fine. If you want them to change the color of the font, absolutely fine, tell them that. But tell them that expli explicitly so that they can give you the product that you're looking for. Again, we talked about a, a flip classroom earlier, um, a, a flip meeting, excuse me. And so I'm actually gonna show you an image of a, a flip classroom that I, a meeting that I've done before um, with some of my teachers. And uh, we'll do that really quickly so we can move forward. <clears throat> so again, my norms are at the very, very top. We're going to have a discussion, but I wanna have your, I wanna get your perspectives so that when we come together, we can have a real conversation. And so again, what are my norms? When you enter your ideas, please paste your initials so I know who your thoughts belong to. Who, who said whatever, right? Just give me your initials before you do that. Use the add comment function um, so that, they can talk to each other, you know, before we, you know, hey, I see what you said. Can you kind of expound, expound on that for me a little bit and make it make sense to me? Absolutely. Um, please do not wait to add your thoughts. Please add it before we have the meeting. Please don't, have, you know, add, the, add your comments while we're in the meeting. That's kind of pointless after that. Um, feel free to add more text boxes. So again, if you get down here and I, hey, I've run out of room, I need space to talk. All you have to do is press the tab button and you can add a new box. Okay. Um, and then lastly, it's an open forum. Be sure to discuss ideas and not people. I don't like what you said. No, 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 no. Let's discuss the idea itself, not, you know, people. So again, that's the norms I would like in any, any meeting, you know, let's not talk about each other. Let's talk about ideas. You know, small minded people talk about people, you know, big minded people talk about ideas and dreams and visions. So, yep. So again, that's some of the things that we've kind of done. I'm sorry, I do apologize. So again, in the boxes below, add your concerns for the hallway. I gave them the opportunity to do so. I've added some text about, hey, this is what I want to do. Now give me your thoughts. And so it's kind of like a conversation. 
I'm saying something, you respond back. I'm saying something else, you respond back. So it's a real give and take, and it's really helpful. Um, I've seen it work really well um, as I've used it in my school. So again, that, that success criteria are just really explicit directions for how I want the conversation to run. Again, if you give everybody a rubric, they can know exactly how they will be scored. So if I look over here at the uh, gold standard over here on the side, I will know that I will get maximum points for whatever uh, assignment that we're doing. So again, it will uh, go a long way with the success criteria. They work hand in hand by making sure you get that mastery product that you're looking for. Writing in color, all I'm asking you to do is to I have 15 people working in one document, change the color of your text so I can track where your comments are. So again, I, this is very helpful. If I have students working in a group of four, I see green, yellow, blue, red. Hey, I don't see red anymore, baby. Where's your work? What's going on? And so um, I can really give that direct feedback over there. Try to use colors that are easy to read. So we don't use yellow, we don't use white text, we don't use black because black looks like the, uh, the, the text that I wrote, you know, that looks like the instructions. So I can't tell that apart. So again, I, tr I do encourage them to use some bright colors and you know, anything, as long as I can read it. That, that's the only um, thing that I do. And again, it's just very easy to track their participation. All right, and then lastly, uh, we're going to uh, ask them to have side conversations. And so we're going to do that in just a second. All right, so uh, we're going to move forward in our, yeah, we're moving slow. So we're going to collaborate. This is an example of success criteria, okay? So before we go into the Google, uh, Google Doc that we're going to put into the chat, the link should be there in just a second. Um, we're going to make sure we know what we're looking for. What am I going to do when I get there? Here are my directions, okay? So there's a legend at the very top of the document. Pick a box, any box. <laughs> Type your first name in there. And then uh, also give me your first and last, your initials and highlight that text and change the color of the text, okay? These directions are also in the Google Doc, but again, I just wanted to make sure you understood. Yep. Absolutely. And Regina, as folks are going there, um, I did pop in the link to the Google document in our chat. I can see some, um, what are they called? Um, what are the little tiny faces called Avatar. at the top of the Google? Avatars. Thank you. My goodness. I could not think of that. Yeah, it's, it's all good. <laughs> Um, but I see the little tiny avatars popping up at the top of the dock. Absolutely. And if you would just go ahead and freely go ahead and go through, I'm going to keep going over the directions just so I get my mastery product. Okay. Because the, the questions that are already writ written, built into the Google document are actually my exit ticket questions. Those are the things I need for feedback. And so if you would go ahead and engage with that, that would be absolutely fantastic. So again, go ahead and use that legend. Be sure to use the same color for the entire document. So if you chose green, every text that you use in each of the boxes uh, going down needs to be green. Um, you're going to respond to at least three of the four questions. There are four questions. So scroll down. OK, and uh, and there are actual boxes after that. Remember, if you need an extra box, go to the very last box, press tab and a new box will come up at the bottom. If you'll make sure that you comment on at least one person's <laughs> ideas, that would be fantastic as well. It just shows me you know how to use the comment feature. And then lastly, if you'll just rate our engagement for the day. If you'll uh, tell me what that looks like to you. Have you enjoyed yourself? I love it, look at y'all, yes, <laughs> I love it. Okay, all right. Okay, apparently I can't spell, but thank y'all. <laughs> <laughs> my fault. But thank you so much for going in and choosing a box. Thank you so much. Be careful. Somebody's highlighted the whole thing. So cool. Everybody freeze. Everybody freeze. All right. So this is what happens. Everybody freeze because I don't want you to keep typing and lose your place. So somebody, <laughs> somebody went back and they uh, got rid of the box. No worries. So all we're going to do is just go back, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> oh no. 
And this no, happened. I, I think this can is good. Click, I, can you click the back button? I, I was did, just saying the undo button. And I back. went all the way back and it still didn't have what I needed. So I do apologize. If you would be so kind as to go ahead and please add your uh, information back in. No problem. Your time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was beautiful. Go ahead and jump back in. All right. Be careful. Yes, very real time uh, issue. If you highlight the entire box, the entire box is going to go away. So be very careful as you're um, highlighting and moving through your uh, your text. But again, thank you so much for jumping back in. I appreciate you so much. Very beautiful. And it's really pretty to watch. <laughs> it's really cool to watch everybody kind of going in and doing their own thing at the same exact time. Thank y'all so much. I do appreciate y'all coming back in. So I see something added. Uh, it says email is a, is a way that you collaborate. Um, you can link things like hyperlink things into your email as well. So the same com uh, concept, if you highlight the text and then click link in your Gmail, you can add any document, any website, anything that you wanted to do so that when they click that text again, it will send them there. So that's that's really a, a good segue uh, into it. Be careful, somebody just oh, oh, somebody, <laughs> somebody just highlighted. There we go. There you go. That's how you fix it. It's all good. <laughs> no, I think it's cool, though. I think this is really nice to see in real time and just... Yeah. Somebody type Microsoft Teams. I'm interested. Uh, how do you like the uh, functionality of that? Let me see who typed that. I feel like I... I, anonymous I feel like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I might know who typed yeah. that. I use Microsoft Teams daily for my work. Okay, so how, how do you feel from what you've seen today? Um, so I, I feel Microsoft, Microsoft Teams is also a great tool to use. I think it depends on what you're trying to do. So for mm -hmm. me as a remote worker, Microsoft yeah. Teams is fantastic because mm -hmm. super quick messages throughout the day. But if I was working on something more collaborative, I would prefer doing a Google Doc. Okay, okay. Um, is there a, uh, is there a, is there something that works like a Google Classroom in uh, Teams? Um, Dr. Lynn. The yeah, like, so oh. <laughs> the re I will just say the biggest limitation that I just ran into, um, and, and this is a question for you too, Regina. So it's great that there's a chat feature in Teams, right? So there's mm -hmm. that instant messaging back and forth. Oh, yeah. It saves me so much time with emails. It's so much easier. However, when you make your Teams group, which would be similar to your Google Classroom, mm -hmm. the chat feature does not talk with your team's group. Oh, wow. And so there isn't a threaded chat discussion through Microsoft. There is a, something you can download, I think that would work, but it, I haven't successfully done it yet. But, um, but yeah, so if you want to have a chat with that group, you'd have to set that up separately. It's not a part, but otherwise the team's group, once that's set up is designed to be similar to um, Google Classroom, but I don't think it, it's clunkier. I don't, you know, yeah. I don't, I will say that OneDrive and Google Docs, I prefer to do OneDrive Google uh, collaboration because it has all the features of Word and I, I like the features of Word. Me too. Um, you know, but for students, like K-12 students, I think Google is the way to go. It's free, mm -hmm. it's easy, it's accessible to all, you know, um, and, and OneDrive is not. And um, it's simpler. So, yeah. I absolutely love it. Somehow my, um, somehow my uh, rubric from the end went away. So again, I'm going to show you a little something, something. It's okay. <laughs> All do right, you so have a chat, Regina, in Google, in Google Classroom? Sorry, do you have a chat in that feature? Um, it, it functions kind of like a Facebook. Okay. You so, yeah. you know, there's a thread and then people can reply to that thread. It's, it's kind of works in that manner. Okay. Um, so uh, what I'm doing right now, as you see in the document we're working in currently, my rubric is not there anymore. So all I did was go back to a, a past version. I'm going to copy and paste the rubric that I want to put back. I'm going to go back 
to the document that we're working in. Oh no, I messed up. <laughs> Here we go. I clicked too many times. I got overzealous. I'm sorry. And then I'm going to add my rubric down here at the bottom again. There it is. All right. So, yeah. So, again, nothing's ever lost in Google. That's a beautiful thing. Right. So, you can always go back and, uh, and you know, figure some things out and uh, make it work for you. Um, and I really, uh, really appreciate you all and your time. I hope that this has been helpful. Uh, are there, oh, thank you for adding your comments. I see them. Good job, y'all. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You can definitely add your uh, rubric answers into the chat, or you can add a comment if you would like to as well um, on the rating our collaboration for the, for the day. Absolutely fine. Whatever feels more um, freeing to you. Um, and again, I am open to any questions. Are there, yes, are there yes, any yes. things that I can answer for you really quickly? And I'm going to share my email, my uh, NCU email. Please talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. I don't mind uh, helping out. I don't mind hopping on a Zoom, on a Google Meet, on anything um, to help you out in any way. I, I believe, you know, every child, every day, whatever it takes, or, you know, every person every day, whatever it takes. So I'm a servant at heart. So if you need any help, reach out. I, lo I love that. And maybe another day we can talk about your leadership style. I wonder if it has anything to do with servant leadership, but that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, do, I, I do want to get back to Kendra just to make sure, because I know yeah, sure. that she had asked a question, but I wasn't quite sure um, what it was in reference to. So Kendra, if you do want to, you're more than welcome to unmute um, and and kind of dive into that question about the student preference. I um, think maybe she might be asking about maybe the success criteria, I think. Okay. Um, from a student, is this the preferred way you want to see it? I think maybe that might be what she was trying to get at. And yes, okay. That would be the answer to that. Um, my success criteria is exactly what I want my product to look like at the end of our time together. Yes. I okay. think that's what she was asking. So. Okay, wonderful. And then um, folks, if there are any other questions, uh, please feel free to, to hop in. Um, should be able to raise your hand and or unmute. And I'm just gonna and wait so just a couple moments while that while we look at your your contact information here. Yes, and so here's my contact information. Please, please, please reach out, reach out, reach out. Um, I can also put the link to my Google Classroom that I created um, into uh, our shared space as well, so that uh, that can always be a landing place for yes. um, for anything that, hey, I remember I, I forgot to ask, you know, I'm so sorry, that's my school one. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have so many I have so many Google Super cool. yeah so this is uh this is the Google Classroom one and I want to question while you're doing this um can you activate change log was one of the questions in the chat Ooh, you're gonna have to explain that to me I'm sorry what is it I know I'm so sorry, Giovanni, are, um, are you able to unmute and ask that question? Let me see here. And yes, uh, while we're waiting to see if he wants to expand, uh, Dr. Lynn is popping some things in the chat about the newsletter. Uh, for Hello. Hey, Giovanni, hey, Giovanni, how are, how are you? you? Doing good, thank you. Uh, tracking. Track, tracking log, I believe that's what it's called. It's when you can see the last people or someone that has made the change to the document itself. Yes. In case somebody added and replaced that line, which is the examples you were giving. Yes. And so, <laughs> so right, up here at the, right up here at the top of that Google uh, document, right here, it says last edit was made seconds ago by anonymous IBIX. <laughs> if you're actually working with people, 
um, you can definitely see who exactly added what comment at what time, and there will be a stream of um, of different color dots and names and things for everyone that has collaborated on the same document. And so again, yes, I've used this with a classroom of 30 and we're all working in one document and I can see everyone listed down and I can see, so for example, all of these are gray because they're anonymous users. Mm -hmm. But if it were not anonymous, everyone would be their own color and I can see exactly where they're, uh, I can track it, what you were saying, right, yes. Thank so, you very much. Thank you so much and for that, that question. That is available in Google Docs. Okay. In Google Docs, that's available in Google Slides. That's a Google, all the Google Suite should be able to do that for you. Thank you, Giovanni. That's a great question. Um, and, uh, and so the way to access that is just that tiny little phrase where it says last edit was made by, and it will show you the history. Correct. Awesome. Fantastic. And um, some other folks asked if they were going to have access to this so they can go back to it, review, learn again. Um, and yes, I will go ahead and send uh, an email to everybody who has participated tonight. And of course, it's on the VESC playlist as well. So um, Regina, is there anything else that you want to say in closing before I wrap up? My heart is full. Thank you so much for taking your time out today. I'm honored. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, Regina, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you coming to present. Honored to have you as a doctoral student at NCU. And as always, Dr. Amy Lynn, thank you so much for providing us opportunities to learn and grow as practitioners in our own field and um, the skills that we can use beyond that as well too. So thank you. We've had so many students present. So if you're interested in presenting, please don't hesitate to reach out, get on the list. Uh, we have Meredith Thomas uh, coming up in October, which isn't on the VESC website right now, but that will be soon. And um, I encourage you to, to take part in that. That will be on Screencastify. Regina, you are phenomenal. And I just have to say that I have been a school principal and it sounds like that's what you're doing, right? Teachers, yes, ma'am. I'm an assistant principal. Yes, ma'am. Teachers must love you. They I must try. love you. I try. I get on their nerves, but I do solve all their problems. Okay. <laughs> you have a wonderful demeanor. Thank you so much for, for just being yourself, showing up as yourself, taking a risk, and presenting to our community. Really deeply appreciate it. I'm honored for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you all, and have a great night. Bye-bye.